in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to another recap and review episode of the Top 10 Show. I am John Roca. I am Matt Nost. And today we are reviewing another musical biopic. Seems to be a lot of studios are going back into the 60s and 70s and bringing this music back. And it is the Elton John story, Rocket Man, starring Taron Egerton, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, Richard Madden, and numerous other people in this film, um, British actors and what have you. Um. Yeah, Matt. Do are you an Elton John fan? How do you not like Elton John? Yeah, that's a, a, some people don't. I'm sure they don't. But he he's got so many songs. Yeah. To trust me, there's one that you more than likely begrudgingly <laughs> like. admit it's a good song. I don't like Elton John though. I hate Elton John, but that's a good song. But that's a good song. He's just got <laughs> so many. He really does. And it spans a bunch of different like weird genres. Yeah. I love the ending of you know ending it in the mid '80s with "I'm Still Standing." Yeah. To build up to that. There are moments of that movie that I enjoyed thoroughly, and there are others that felt like a stage play to me. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so your overall feeling about the movie? Spoiler alert, by yeah. the way. Oh, yeah, sure, we should say that. Sorry, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We're going to spoil everything about the movie and talk about it over the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Matt, what did you think overall? I liked it. I didn't love it. Oh, wow, okay. It, it had moments, like that Rocket Man scene in the pool. Oh, yeah. When the little kid is down below and there's the light shimmering in, and then you start thinking about it in the context of... Well, this could be a song about him and his loneliness, and he's out in space because he has no friends. He has no one close to him. He yeah. is by himself, and he's out of Earth's orbit, and he just kind of wants to come back. He wants to go. Yeah. But looking back, his childhood didn't seem all that pleasant. Yeah. At least, by the way, his, I thought his grandma was going to be a bigger portion of the story, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Like the one positive influence because the dad was so you know, standoffish and cold, and the mom was so dependent on basically being the victim. Yeah. Uh, so... I thought the grandma was going to step up. She takes him to the observatory mm -hmm. or the conservancy or whatever yeah, it is. Conservatory. Yeah. Conservatory. Uh, and it, later on when, you know, he's playing on the piano and the first time, what is that first song? When he gets handed the lyrics and he sits down at <sighs> the, the, the piano. Crap. Um, shoot. I don't remember. But everybody just slowly realizing. Yeah. I wonder how close that is to accurate because that's that was the trade off of I hand you the lyrics and then I just start writing the song based on. Well, that was the the thing about him is that he was a musical prodigy. Like he could just come up with it on the, like almost like Amadeus. He could just imitate whatever you just did, e almost perfectly. And so he just yeah, had. And he that shows up skill. and he shows that teacher. Yeah. Uh, that's as far as you got. Right. It should have been a better scene actually. Okay. Well, there's nothing against them. It's just like something about me did. I knew it was getting to that. Yeah, because uh, I've seen Amadeus, but when he when he does that, just the I don't know the innocence in his eye, the playful. Yeah, but everybody thinks he's being a prick, and he's just actually really pleased with himself. Right, uh, that's all it is. Just yeah. a, a little bit of ego. His dad's been fucking foot on his throat <laughs> his whole life. <laughs> Let him have these little joys. Yeah, they don't know that though. No, although he's a bit of a hedonist. But anyway, Man. that's a different movie. Yeah, right. well, actually, it's kind of the same. It kind of is. It does get explored. <laughs> yeah, in yeah, the movie. yeah, it does. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. Do you hear that Russia uh, cut out the uh, what? love making scene? What? Really? Between him and Rob. Oh, that's ridiculous. Uh, you know, censorship, man. It's different Russia. in different places. I'm sure they didn't even play in, in a few countries. Well, yeah, probably not. God forbid. The reality of, uh, oh, it's so stupid. Um, it doesn't matter at all. I loved it. I loved it from beginning to end. I enjoy the musical aspects of it all and the fantastical musical numbers that are in the middle of it for some of the songs. Uh, I enjoy the vision Dexter Fletcher had for this movie. Uh, and remember that Dexter Fletcher stepped in and took over for Brian Singer for Bohemian Rhapsody. So he had a kind of, there were similar characters in both films, which is really funny. Okay. Uh, I found that to be interesting. As a, a Aiden Gillen, the guy from Game of Thrones, is the same character that Richard Madden oh. is playing in this movie. Uh, so that I enjoyed. Uh, I like that you, Taron Egerton. I think that I thought did a fantastic he job. Did. His singing was really good. Sing, and because I, I didn't buy his singing in the trailers, 
But seeing in the context of the film, I was like, oh, this is cool. Really Even good. at like the mouth, the way his mouth yes. moves on certain vowel sounds and whatnot. Yeah. Just like you're you're doing a great job here. Mm-hmm. Um But the, yeah. the the problem is, so we don't see a lot of the virtuosity outside of he picks up the piano pretty quickly yeah. and then he impresses the teacher and then boom, we're done with that. Yeah. So the mom's criticism late in the movie of, you know, everything's come easy to you. We kind of saw it. Yeah. Yeah. He did. rose to superstardom super quick. Right. Um, but that's what the movie presented. Yeah. We didn't, because you have to cover so much time, how much you could to spend on the strife because there's all this other stuff, but it, yeah. I don't know. It just seemed like, yeah, you had too much drugs. Well, and yeah, we were, it, I wonder, did that feel cliche to you a little bit? Like, oh, the, another rock and roller getting into the drugs, blah, blah, blah. Like, or was this a new way into that thing that we've seen before? I mean, I guess cliched seems hard. Yeah. Because uh, cliched seems lazy. Yeah. And they definitely put the time and effort into telling an interesting story and tying these songs into emotional pivots and putting in in different contexts than you had thought mm-hmm. about before. Like I said with Rocket Man, like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. If that was your intended consequence to create this other philosophical debate, right. I love everything about that. That's beautiful. Right. But when they go to uh, Taryn and Rob go to the department store and basically it's just like shine. Oh, yeah. That type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And all the women are coming over and like, you know, it felt like an old black and white or early talky kind of musical yeah, yeah. with people just like all this action, but like a number that was cut from Annie. Yeah. And <laughs> then it's just like, all right, this seems like a real like a stage play. Yeah. I, there's nothing wrong with that. I like plays. Mm-hmm. But the grandiosity, the idea that you could do these other things with it were way more intriguing to me. Yeah. Um, I like the Troubadour sequence. When okay. he comes out and has the concert and it's like it's, he's confronting this idea of having to do this here. And like people are, t- oh, yeah, these are the great, uh, these great artists are in the audience waiting for you to do your thing. What that must feel like. Do you know what I'm saying? When you're a kid from a small town in fucking England, here you are coming to Los Angeles and you're being handed this incredible concert at a young age in your early 20s. And here are all these musical idols of yours who've mm-hmm. been consistently successful. Here you are walking out to do your first like really big concert in front of people like this what the pressure of that must have been like so when he walks out there and like is really in command because he's you know he's altered in some way and he's doing his thing and his legs come off of the ground and he's i I was like this is fucking great i love that all the visual imagery of this film is fantastic because if you ever you know seen and i'm saying this in general not to you right uh, a concert where you can feel the fact that the band is tuned in with you as an audience yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. And I, I've, I've experienced it, you know, in comedy where you just, the vibe in the room is everything is fun. Everything can happen right now. Yeah. We're all on board because we're enjoying ourselves collectively. And right. you can feel that energy change and seeing bands. Sometimes you can just tell they're happy to be there tonight. Yeah. They're having a good time. They're interacting with us. And it's just, it's only so many people in here. So you could feel the raw energy of that. Right. So to capture that in this euphoric, everybody lifts up. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. To like, boom, there's a moment. If there's a guy that's got to like really go from doing bar shows to suddenly he is a national touring act. Yeah. Which I need to look up and see how quick that rise was. Cause it's just yeah. like. The Troubadour, the Troubadour is, le- that's, that concert is legendary. Uh, it has to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been taught. I've I've read about it and seen documentaries that mention it as this really penultimate uh, Do you think it's, thing. You think it's like Wilt's hundred point game, where the number <laughs> yeah, of people that yeah, say that they're, they've they're, been they were at that game just grows. So the thing must have held two hundred fifty thousand people by the end of it. I was there. I was with Neil Diamond that night. It's a hundred person club. Two hundred fifty thousand people were there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like Wilt's over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that stadium held back in the day, f- f- what? What do you think it was five thousand? Maybe five, six tops. So yeah. let's say it sold out. Yeah, maybe, uh, possibly, possibly. They were on the East Coast, right? But over the years, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's astronomical, <laughs> six figures for sure. Yeah, sure. All the years, or now maybe it's the permutations of my grandpa or my dad. Yeah, and was there? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the harm in it? Yeah, I was there for Bond's seventy third, <laughs> or whatever. Were? Was that the one that broke McGuire? Yeah, seventy three. Yeah. Uh, you were there? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you believe that for a second. Totally. That's how easy it is. I was there that night. You were? Oh, it was great. It was great. Dude, uh, one, one of my closest <laughs> friends was there the night that Owen Hart died. Oh, shit. What? He was in Kansas City. He told me the story. We used to do a was podcast he in the together. Stu- was in the audience? He was in the audience. What? He was in Kansas City. Oh, my God. And him and I think his brother and dad wow. uh, went in big wrestling pants. They watched Owen Hart die. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it was terrible because he fell from the fucking ceiling Fuck of yeah, the stadium. Did and they said, see that? Look, it, I heard the full, like, he told a 20, 25-minute version of it oh. to me once because we used to do a podcast together way yeah. back when. And, I mean, just, I was so enraptured. So what happened next? Wow. So then how long does he lay there? And, and you know, oh, just crazy one after the other after the other. Yeah. yeah. That soured his taste on wrestling. Wow. We were, I remember watching that with my friend Andre Gordon, who I also did a podcast with. Uh, we were watching back in at Florida State. We were mm-hmm. we would go to this bar, this like sports bar, um, and they would show the pay per views. You'd pay twenty bucks, and then you'd sit there that night with a bunch of other wrestling fans, you know, ordering beer, food, whatever, yeah. and watching and reacting to the pay per view on a massive screen. So it was a great time. It was almost like being there, you know. Um, and I we were there, and I rem- and the thing starts. And you hear this stuff, and then boom, it goes black. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? Did the feed break? Blah, blah, blah. And then you hear Jim Ross. You hear Jerry Lawler talking in the black frame. <laughs> the best. They're the best. Yeah. They, they are. are the best. And you're just like, what the fuck is happening? And then, like, I think it's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, the, the, ca- the, the picture comes back up, and they continue with the pay per view. If this had happened in 2019, oh, yeah. outrage. there's no fucking way they continue with the pay-per-view. Utter outrage. Yeah. The show must go on, though. Vince said the show must go on. Well, we got all these pay-per-view. We got this entire live audience. Yep. We got everybody in. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. wrestlers are ready to wrestle. Yeah. There is no social media yeah, yeah, man. to shut us down. And just this fucking brutal thing happens. Yep. yep. And, and I think that's what soured Bret Hart for a long time on the WWE. Not only his unceremonious exit, but also... The fact that how they handled his brother dying. They didn't stop the pay-per-view fully. They didn't, like, not do it that night. They kept going after taking Owen out of the ring. And that just always pissed off Brett. How uh, could it not? Yeah, yeah. How could it not? I mean, given the context of the time... Vince McMahon doesn't strike me as an individual. If there was no social media, he would make that choice again today. Oh, a thousand times out of a thousand. yeah. Yeah. And look... We know that about him. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like it's a deviation from our preconceived notions of who that individual is. <laughs> right. So right. it's exactly what you'd expect of him. Yeah. Uh, Especially if you watch that old interview with him and Costas, when he's like threatening Bob Costas and smacks the notes out of Bob Costas's hand in the one-on-one interview. If you've never seen this. I haven't. Dude, it's a fucking unsettling That interview. dude's just been unhinged. <laughs> yeah, for a while. Well, now. he's gotten to basically alpha all these steroided up. Yeah. Some on drugs, like yeah. just you know, he's dudes. got to, he's the king of the jungle. He is, he's he been m- slapping bigger lions on the nose for decades, yeah, for decades. Uh, so the fact that he did that, it's, I mean, honestly, a hundred years ago, he would have been in whatever business was equivalent to the circus, sure. he treats the animals horribly, carny, absolutely, yeah, you know, but he's running that and it's about making money. I don't care about the animal welfare, I don't care right. about the. My performer is, I'm just here to make a dollar. He won't let them, the fact that he won't let them unionize, that's the one at the no, end. No, they're all independent contractors, yeah. even though they perform and work with this company 200, yeah. 300 days a year. That's the one at the end of the day. Yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah. they're not independent contractors at yeah, that point. Exactly. They're not. Yeah. They're employees. Yeah, that's the way it goes. It is. Um, oh, where are we at right now on the thing? All right. So, uh, anything else stand out to you about the film? Um,. I mean, overall, I think it's a good experience, especially if you like any kind of... Uh, I, it's a musical, but it's not a musical. Yeah. It has musical aspects in it, but it, I mean, it's about the music taking you through uh, different points in his life and trials and travails, because it kind of jars you from moment one when he's walking in mm-hmm. in this grandiose mm-hmm. costume. Yeah. But to sl- see to him... To rehab. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To see him slowly as he devolves into his story, strips away the artifice of the costume, right. and eventually he's just a guy. The symbolism of it, yeah. Yeah, and just he really needs to get down to the essence of the problem. Yeah. And what's motivating all of this behavior. Yeah. And then goes right back to the costumes as soon as he's good. Because <laughs> you know? now he's choosing to go back yes. to the costumes as opposed to using the costumes to hide himself. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. no longer armor. Yeah, It's right. now em- you know, embracing yeah. the it's, moment type of thing. It's now empowering. Uh, did you like Jamie Bell as Bernie Talpin? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I thought he did a nice job. So did I. I would like to have seen more, but at the same time, this is an Elton John movie. Yeah. And they weren't ever you know, romantically engaged. Right. They were friends, always friends. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to keep bringing him in Yeah, when Elton's going to be spinning off interacting with all these other characters because there's no really reason for him, songwriter, to be there unless they're, they were, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, I mean, it's enjoyable. Yeah. 
but both me and Catherine both were walking out going, yeah, I just would have, it was good. Yeah. You know, she you wanted like, to move on Rouge. But you liked it more than Bohemian? Or like less than Bohemian? Um, I like it more for than Bohemian because it's, I'm assuming more historically accurate, at least in that they only chose to talk about, even though they did with Mercury. Yeah. But then now they're trying to cram in with Mercury, what kills me, spoiler, on Bohemian. Rhapsody, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is the, the day. And that's all I need to call oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The day. Yeah, right, right. Where three of the <laughs> biggest things that are ever going to happen to him in his entire life yep. happen over the course of ostensibly day. four hours, five hours, at least until the start of the concert. Yep. And then after that, who knows how long after that? I'm not counting that. Right. But just to get to the start of the concert, that's like a four or five hour before. You don't want to burn yourself out before this huge concert. Yeah. So four hours seems like pushing it. Yeah. And he does two of the biggest things, picking up. What would then be the his, his partner yeah. for the rest of his days? Yes, picks him up at his house. <laughs> There's been no mention of that character since they happened upon one another at that party or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. no mention of him. Yeah, but I knew that that was the dude going in. So yeah. then show up and he jumps and then they drive to his parents' house. Yeah, and he comes out and then they're together forever. And then he does live forever. aid. And they're together forever. And yeah, and they <laughs> crush his live aid. Yeah, and his manager then like turns the fucking volume up to eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's. It's a lot. It's a lot to ingest of, oh, well, now you're just going to keep throwing up. Okay, sure. <laughs> We're doing Put this sprinkles now. on this Sunday. You know, you earned it. <laughs> We're doing this now. All yeah, right. yeah, all it's right. fine. It's fine. I mean, there's a lot. It's a hell of a day. Yeah. I don't right. know if he deserves sprinkles on this fucking Sunday, but all right. It's his day. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I guess he gets one. You get the gold records, put the sprinkles on. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I would have liked to. Uh, the thing I will say, though, I would have liked to. You know, these music biopics are very difficult because they don't delve deeply enough into the personal relationships, right? We do yeah. get the mom stuff, the grandma stuff, the stuff with Richard Madden. Um, of course, you know, he marries a woman in the film and what, that, what they go through there. Um, but I, I just wanted a little more of the inner exploration. You know, and okay, of like really because he's going deeper and deeper into the psychology. Although, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, you it's off. okay. But like Ray, Ray does that, and that's why I like Ray. You can, you know, you can bash Jamie Foxx's performance as a character or whatever, but at least they explore more his relationship with uh, with his honeybee, that girl, uh, the one, yeah. yeah, and then the drug stuff, really, and then how it connects back to him as a child being blind and what his mother tries to tell him, all that kind of stuff. I think I, f I found that to be a more richer biograph um, biography about a musician mm -hmm. than Bohemian or Rocketman, even though I enjoy Rocketman so, a lot more than Bohemian. Bohemian's a fun film. That's a fun film. It is. Do it's not just... look for any depth in that movie. No. It is fun. And like, but Rocketman has more depth than that. Like, Rami winning for that to me is... Yeah. It's, you know, good for him. Right. I think he's an excellent actor. Yeah. But the depth of that was nowhere near what somebody like Bradley Cooper had to do. People are afraid to call it what it is. It's a sympathy Oscar. It's a sympathy Oscar. Okay. That's what I think it is. Uh, I think Cooper was the better performer. Uh, yeah. All around. As the actor and the singer, the director... Uh, well, the emotional of it. complexity the emotion, of that, right, exactly. that character. The journey, exactly. That, to me, was the only character that ultimately made sense in that movie. Yep. Because, you know, Gaga's did not to me. No. Or at least all the choices she made when she became famous. Right. And Sam was, at best, peripheral character to him, to Bradley Cooper's situation. Right? So that's the thing with Rami's. It's a great imitation of Freddie Mercury. Great. It is. It's, it's fantastic. good. But to me, the difference is... So I was having this conversation with a friend. Yeah. And they're like, okay, but... My, my qualm with it is if you're going to reward it, it needs to be a transcendently good in an okay film. And to, right. to me, that's, a, that's, a, that's an all right film, you know? Yeah. If I'm grading that, I, I give that like a high C, low B, somewhere in there. You know what I mean? I it's give good. it a B minus, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but it needs to transcend. Like, think Johnny Depp in Black Mass to me. That movie is, it's okay. It's okay. But he <laughs> is so utterly transfixing. Absolutely. That when you award him with a nomination, it's like, you have no shot of winning, but you deserve this. Yeah. Because you elevated what is an okay movie to buy your performance in that is so singularly impressive. Yeah. Right now, it's just like, I didn't know you had this. Like, this is a creepy ass gear, and I believe that you're a stone cold killer. Yeah. That's hard to do because I know you're a dude that pretends. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> right for a living. Yeah. Right? I know deep down, but yeah. just like, dude, you're Whitey Bolt. Like, I never saw Whitey Bolger. 
Yeah, that's a scary dude. <laughs> it does. His head looks strange with the eyes yeah. and, and the proportions and something about it. Man. His he voice, just, too. The voice he does. Yeah. So, oh, it's just settling. It looks like a demon manifest. Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, How did the guy from Benny and June do that? Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's always shown that he's a good actor. I just didn't know he had that kind of menace. Yeah, that, yeah, that gear. Oh. Um, yeah, we'll see if Taron Egerton gets nominated. I certainly thought he did more than Rami did in Bohemian. Doesn't matter, Rami. He won it. last year, so that just tanked him for you this. You think? Yeah, possibly. It's possibly. akin to uh, Walk the Line, right? The year after Ray. Oh, right. Joaquin, you got no shot, even though I think yours is a more interesting portrayal. Uh, yeah, I like his portrayal, too. But yeah. it came out the year after they just awarded for that specific type of movie. Yep, yep. You have zero chance. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does not get nominated. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. And Dexter Fletcher, I hope I, I wish he got nominated, but you know, Singer tried to did, Singer took all the credit for Bohemian last year, which was disgusting. So, or earlier this year. Uh, so whatever, we'll see what happens. Uh, but overall, I, I would say go see it. Um, and if you like Elton John, it's certainly a, a movie you should go see and enjoy. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. If nothing else, certainly not a bad film at all. And maybe there's it's lacking in some certain areas, but overall a good film. Yeah, it's certainly enjoyable. I think it's. Um you know, I specifically went to one with, uh, what is it, Dolby Sound, where oh, that's, yeah. that's what they're selling instead of IMAX or whatever else. Yeah. This one has the best sound. So, like, hey, why don't we go see it in this one? Yeah. Because it's part of the AMC stubs. Stubs. <laughs> and that's my biggest pet peeve now is I think too many people have that app because yeah. I'm noticing now at these $22 supposed to be yeah. ticket level, still people talking, still people on their phone. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to weed out most of that behavior. Yeah, right. So if they have the app, then that means they value it because they're just, they're paying for it anyway, so yeah. they don't care as much. Yeah. Fuck, we're right back to a problem we just had. It's a good point. It's a very good point. Uh, all right, well, that's our uh, recap and review of Rocket Man from director Dexter Fletcher, starring Taron Egerton as Elton John. Uh, well, I, we didn't say this on the last one. Let us know what you thought of uh, True. Rocket Man and what you if you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments section, all that kind of jazz. Remember to rate and review every one of these episodes that we do. It really helps us out and, and gets us uh, seen by more and more people. So um, thanks so much to all the patrons who donate to the show. And Matt, where can they donate if they want to join? They can go other? to patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. Mm-hmm. Hit us up there. Uh, and this comes out. All our recap and reviews come out a week before for the, you know for Patreon only, and then mm-hmm. it comes out for the free feed for right. the bulk of you listening. Now you get it a week later. Yeah. Um, we try and we turn out more content for them. We have uh, tra- uh, Topic Thunder for Patreon only. Hell yeah! And you get to listen to that at the ten dollar level there. So just join join us because it's a beautiful <laughs> country over there. We've got a lot of wide open spaces. We got all the amenities. <laughs> all utilities are already buried underneath, so there's no wires. There's no there's wires. Nothing. Sewage lines are all up to date. They're yep. brand new. That's none of this old clay <laughs> pipe bullshit that's been sitting around for 100 years. That's a good point. It is. It's nice. <laughs> you know what? On the East Coast, they still there are still some uh, areas, um, I don't know how large of, but yeah. they use for water mains, they're hollowed out logs what? because they're left over from 300 or 200 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They still exist. So every once again, there's a rupture. There's fewer and fewer every time. Hollowed out logs. But there's so many different water lines, sewer lines, et cetera, running, especially in the East Coast, but that Upper East where people have been since day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these old systems (laughs) (laughs) don't make any sense a lot of times. Dig it. Dig it. There you go. All right. Well, uh, you can follow Matt and Matt Nost. Follow me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram, and follow our top ten show uh, Twitter that is now uh, active again. Uh, what yeah, it's is great. It? It's at top ten show. Is that what it is? I believe so. Yes, okay. sir. Uh, follow it there. Our, our own uh, Kristen Smith runs that social media account for us. She's very kind to do so. Certainly thanks to all the people who help us with the Patreon stuff like Chris Alexakos and Matthew Hasso. And yeah, who we failed to mention on the last two shows, and we apologize for <laughs> yes, that. Yes, thoroughly. And to Joe Abara and, and Clay. And Clay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you to all all five of you guys. Help us you know, in so many different ways. Yep. And to all our uh, patrons that support us. Um, it's been fantastic. We keep growing. Yeah. And it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. We're still trying to come out to your cities, and we're working on those details. Toronto, Houston. I know. It almost feels weird that we don't have a live show in progress. I know. We don't have one lined up, but yeah. there's, you know. There's, there's outside world stuff happening, and then once that settles down a little bit, I think we'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both in the midst of a whole all kinds of crazy right now. Yeah. So things got to die down a little bit. Yeah. And uh, 
That is it for us this week. All right. Thank you so much for listening to the recap and review. There you go. Take care, everybody.